Hi and welcome to another episode of Getting Dirty with Glenn. Today I'm out in the garden. It's uh, 4th of July weekend. Today's actually July 5th. So I thought I'd do a little update on what's going on in the garden. Show you what's doing well. Um, I don't really think I have too many challenges, but let's take a look. Alright, turning around here. This is the front garden. Got a lot of hostas, some clematis growing on here. Um, got a clematis over here. Got a little bit of wilt, one of the plants. I usually just cut that off right at about six inches above ground and it usually will come back. Got some clematis coming around on the back. We got some, uh, <clears throat> a lot of varieties of hostas underneath this tree. This flowering crab, if you watch my other videos, not fond of it, it was here when I moved in. And uh, it may be coming out in the next year or two. Got some great astilbe over here. This is dwarf astilbe. Still be chinensis pumala. You can see the flower buds that are starting to come up on that stalk. Let's go around out here in front. Lots of blooms, nice pale lavender, I guess, flowers. Some of my favorite hosta, the health, excuse me, halcyon. This here we got some suckers to cut off of the flowering crab. I think in 45 years of designing, building, and maintaining gardens. I've only planted one crab for one person that really wanted it. I'm just not a big fan of flowering crabs. Up here, this is uh, Darwin's garden. <laughs> it's kind of survival of the fittest. But I usually don't put these type of annuals in here, but I wanted to experiment. So I've got these annuals in here and an ornamental grass that is struggling to get established. Now here we've got black lace elderberry. Very thick, gorgeous. I love it because of the dark color. I love it because it adds another texture to the garden. Uh, the new foliage comes out green. There's no blooms on this one. There may be on the other one that I look at, but there are no blooms. But it's nice because it adds a screen. When I'm sitting out on the front porch, it gives me a little bit of privacy, even though my neighbors are 500 feet to the street. So I'm not too worried about <laughs> privacy here, but it does break up the garden a little bit. My stellar little lime hydrangea. I'm gonna get some fertilizer on these. Um, and they're doing great. If you've seen, uh, I cut these back to about six inches tall each spring and they push growth. I'm gonna get some organic pest control on here that works fantastic. We'll talk about that in another video, but we'll keep any uh, Japanese beetles and stuff from getting in on these. I already sprayed everything with that spray once. Allium Summer Beauty, just starting to uh, come out here and bloom. Got the resident bees on here. Great, it's obviously in the onion family. We've got, let me stop here. One of my favorite trees, columnar hornbeam. This tree is great. At the base here, it might get 15, 20 feet wide. That's it, so if you're trying to get scale to a large home, like a lot of my clients' homes are very large, so we can put this close to the house. And that's not going to be an issue because it does grow in a pyramidal shape. We've got another black lace elderberry back there and um, some hardy hibiscus in here. Uh, weed. That's all right. Pull the weeds up here. Some hardy hibiscus. And I love butterfly milkweed. Planted like seven of them in here. I've lost a couple over the last two years. Um, but I love that because that is one of the few flowers that is orange, neon orange, in the garden. Got some grasses here. Hard, hard rain last night. Uh, prevailing, well, in the summer, the wind comes out of the southwest. So it comes right across the field and knocks that down. Let's go over here to one of these other gardens. It's nice about gardens. What you want, obviously, gardening 101, is... You want plants to bloom. You don't want them to bloom all at once. You want them to bloom over a period of time. And that can be, the bloom might be great. The texture of the foliage might be great. There's a lot of variables you can look at. Heights, different heights, what's going on. Out here, I've got a couple different varieties of daylilies blooming here. Planted so they're gonna be blooming at a different time. I love this color, it's more of a peach color. False indigo, they had great blooms. We had blue and orangish red. Uh, 
They were great, but now they're done. And uh, sometimes it gets seed pods on them. This is a uh, dwarf lilac. And not just because it's small, it's just a variety of dwarf lilac that was overgrown. I cut it back this spring and you can see all the new growth coming back. This one is a little stressed and maybe coming out. Um, not sure what happened down in here, but got a lot of deadwood in there. That's probably going to come out. I've got some more hardy hibiscus in my holding garden out back. And I'll probably be filling this in with hardy hibiscus. I'll probably put another three in here. See, I've got one hardy hibiscus here that's got a uh, purplish color to the foliage. And the flowers are the size of dinner plates. Got another one here with green foliage. So you can get hardy hibiscus in a couple different colors. And we'll look at it from this side. This is creeping flocks. I love creeping flocks. This is a carpet of blue in the spring. I think I may have that on some of my drone videos. And uh, the rabbits came in and right in here munched a big hole in there. But it's great, they do rejuvenation pruning. <laughs> you can see it's all come in. There's a big hole here. They, they ate that, came back in. Um, got a little pruning to do on this uh, tiger eye sumac. I like pruning like this. I learned to prune like this, looking at some gardens, walking through them with Huichi Kursu, who designed the Portland Garden and Japanese Anderson Gardens. Um, all, you know, all plants don't need to be perfect, like these false indigo. They just look like they came off of a factory production line. They're just perfectly shaped, all that. But I like more characters, just like people. You know, you get this monotone person. They're not very interesting. But, you know, you get the characters, and it's great to talk to them. Down here, we've got Allium Summer Beauty, and we've got Asiatic Lilies mixed in here, along with a little garden sculpture. Never did a lot with garden sculptures until we did a garden in Cedarburg for a woman uh, and a husband and wife, Vicki and Steve. If you see this video, you know who you are. And uh, they inspired us to create, put a lot more artwork in the garden. Doesn't have to be costly. Now this stuff is costly. Uh, you come around this side and now you can see the different textures. You got the fine texture of the creeping moss. Against the daylilies, you've got the textured leaves of the uh, tiger eye sumac. Oh, there's a Japanese beetle right there. That's an indication. That's why it's also good to walk through your garden because you can, in the industry, we call it scouting. But you go out and you can scout and see what's in your garden. And there's a Japanese beetle. Time to spray. I'll probably do it today. Um, well, actually, you're supposed to get some rain. I'll probably do it tomorrow. All right, let's look at one more garden out here in front. We go across over here, and um, it's nice to have all these different kinds of gardens, different focus, different features in these. I like to repeat plants throughout the garden, along with new plants, maybe a little bit different variety, so there's some repetition in the garden. Not everything has to be 30 varieties of plants in one place. But if you go in here, once again, we've got another different daylily, I've got a climate hydrangea that I've got to do some pruning on to get it up here. Just installed my rain gauge today. I've had it. I had an electronic one up here, but it just never seemed to work well into the house. So I went old school, um, analog, I guess, and put this rain gauge up today. We'll see how that works. It's just a good idea to see how much rain your garden is actually getting. Uh, you can do this for $5 on Amazon, probably $10. Or you can spend $150 on a rain gauge, which, in my opinion, you don't need anymore because everybody's got weather apps. Um, here's another great sculpture. Got for, from a woman over in, I believe it's West Bend. Once or twice a year, she opens up her gardens and sells these great sculptures. And you see the Cayman Hydrangea. They're just about to bloom. Oh, I take that back. They have bloomed. They get a big panicle of white blooms in here, but miss that. And this is my forest of Asiatic lilies, which I spray a lot to keep the rabbits and the deer from munching them at the prime time. They seem to wait until right before the bud's gonna bloom, and then they eat it. But uh, 
Black Ice Elderberry, once again, easy plant to maintain, cut it to the ground late spring, and flower head is just uh, getting started there. It's a big panicle of white. And uh, that's it for the front gardens. People try to do this every couple of weeks, just let you know what gardens are doing, how they're looking. Like I said, it's uh, gardens is meant to be enjoyed during the year. There's some plants that don't look great until fall. These hydrangeas don't do anything all summer, but then they get these great blooms in the fall. All summer, they're just this like light green, and then uh, boom, they get these flowers that are white and then pink and then brown, they give you a lot of scale. So the gardens are uh, coming along. Of course, we've got the stressed evergreens like everybody in Wisconsin. And the plants up here.